Welcome to Dream Window. Dream, dream window. Dreams of my heart. Dream window. Has started. (laughs) Welcome everyone to the Dream Window. My name is George. My name is Hart. What do you see out the window today, Hart? As I look out the Dream Window, I see it's raining. And all I see is open water for as far as the eye can see. Dark open water and a white beluga whale is just breaching over the top of the water. Taking a breath. That's what belugas do. Shake off a long day of being a beluga. So much krill. It's tough being a beluga. Everything you eat goes straight to your forehead. Immediately. Almost like the rhinoceros of the sea. But instead of a horn, it's got a big bump. The rhino of the sea. The beluga always seems to me like the like a bar of soap with fins. Heavy weighs the crown. I'd like to see a beluga with sideburns thick flowing sideburns is the beluga muscular is that like a muscle on its head and no i think and in, in, I, I do believe it has something to do with um with some type of sonar oh really yeah like i could be horribly wrong but i believe that is a function it's almost like this giant pulsing sort of radar bigger mm-hmm. head so it has more reception so it's got a satellite in its head almost. Kinda. Mm. Nature did everything first. Well, I always like to think the bottom of the ocean connects to the edge of the universe. So maybe one day we can send belugas out to space and they could transfer our cell phone signals. That would be trippy. Beluga in space. I feel like they got the head for it. I, I, I've seen a couple of people who look like beluga whales. Before. Babies kind of look like beluga whales. That is true. Yeah. It's been some baby drama. I can't know baby drama. <laughs> my like you got in an argument with a baby? <laughs> Listen, baby, you think you know everything? <laughs> Just because you're being reincarnated. The worst is a reincarnated baby that's a know it all. <laughs> The worst kind of baby. And you know some of them are. You almost hope that if you have a baby, you don't get this brilliant reincarnated baby. Because most people just want to make their babies, you know. I mean, I think most people want as much as they want for their children. Right. But they also, there's some familiarity of making your baby as much like you yeah. as possible. But they kind of, you know make a carbon copy of themselves it would be kind of be a ripoff like you meet someone you love you have this beautiful moment that leads to having a child and the child's just like ah, i used to be a 50 year old man <laughs> get me some cigars <laughs> like you want that combination of love you don't want like a bitter you want old a- person <laughs> He's like, I died in a helicopter crash you gotta find my killers <laughs> <laughs> you have a baby with a exactly i always like a it's just you know i always think the worst thing a father can say to a son when they're about to die is avenge me <laughs> just put this huge burden they don't even say what for you gotta figure it out but no. you're just trying to settle scores with everyone <laughs> you know what I mean? nothing worse than an open-ended avenge me <laughs> But then if that, that that father, he's like, avenge me. Uh, and then comes back immediately as a baby. With your, <laughs> to with check the, up on <laughs> With the avenge me fresh in his brain. Yeah. <laughs> that type of baby, that type of old soul baby, mm. no one wants. No. Everyone wants it. I want also, no imprint from your previous life. You, I just want to be able to put myself and my personality yeah. on you. You want to put your personality and then like, you also you're the one, there's a bit of a hierarchy in the baby parent community. 
Imagine a baby that's just outsmarting you in like day one. Exactly. And I think there's some, I think there's some babies out there. Yeah. You know, like people say, it's a, oh, that baby has colic. It's like, no, I thought that colic is when you spit. Colic? No, I mean, but it's like a, it's like a combination of just, I think, pains, growing pains, ear pains, stuff like that. Oh. And you'll be, the baby's crying all the time. Mm. A colicky baby. Right. Um, but, I mean, I think really that's like me at work. I'm just like these idiots <laughs> who taught you how to do this. You should know this already. I'm the baby. Honestly, working is kind of like being reincarnated. Like it's like you live this separate life where you have some pride, and then you go into work, and it's like none of it matters. <laughs> I just don't like gambling. And did don't you coach. ever try gambling? Was there like, were you like, did you have friends that gambled and you're like, okay, let me see what this is all about. Oh, and I then... remember the day we went to uh, a raceway as a kid. Yeah, they were like really at this age where you were, you were, we were just trying out stuff. How we're old like, were you? Oh, see, we could drive at the time. So we must have just been, and I maybe have been, was 15 because I was a year younger than a lot of my friends in school mm. and uh, they were just 16. Yeah, and like we're so we're driving to like, uh, like this is, yeah, just these places just outside of town that weren't accessible before, right? And like we went to one week to this uh, this crappy county, um, this it was a smash up derby oh, okay. at this little like crappy oval, and oh. we're like, hey, maybe we're 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 we're, we're derby guys. Maybe we're going to be, you know, maybe I'm going to be a pit crew guy, and yeah, that, you're the driver, and yeah, you're, we're always making these scenarios where we'd be a team but all different roles yeah and then three weeks later we're like ah eh, i don't know those smash up derby guys were kind of weird i was Let's gonna see. say are you even watching the thing or are you half watching like the people at the thing like, it was Do I all be about these guys no that's, no that's what it was it was this um okay, now looking back on it this fascinating period of exploration where you're we were looking at the old guys there saying hey i'm is that me? Could I grow up and to be that guy? Is this where I want to head? Is this where I want to go? And, yeah. And uh, so we did that. Then we went sailing for a couple of weeks with this other guy with a sailboat. And we were like, ah, no, we're not sailors. Yeah, it's you're going to extremes there, kind of. Then we went to, uh, then we were like, we're going to become go-kart guys. <laughs> so we went to this other small town and, you know, hung out with the go-kart guys, asked mm. some questions, smelled the, the that two-stroke motor oil burning in the air. And we're right. like, ah. I don't think I'm a go kart guy. Go. And then we went to Windsor Raceway. Yeah. And we went to the raceway. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Took back so, to nature. So Enough now, with all these motorized vehicles. Let's see where it all started. The we're horse. now watching the ponies. Mm. And we're, 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 you know, we're talking to old guys. And we kind of like the old guys. Okay. <laughs> At yeah. the horse raceway, yeah, and in a weird way, they're you know they're teaching you about odds and how to gamble. Okay, and um, it's a more relaxed atmosphere, I guess, too. And that was it. It was a little bit more chill. The derby screaming. I picture the go kart place having like guys that maybe when you're young, you are almost like they seem all right, but in retrospect, you're like that's like a thirty year old man at a go kart. <laughs> <laughs> Hanging out with kids. <laughs> well, Guy is not cool at all. <laughs> well, it was a the lot sailing fathers, thing. It was a lot of wannabe race car driver fathers uh, with their yeah. sons. Mm. And yeah, we're just these random orphans walking around <laughs> going, you need a pit boss? <laughs> <laughs> all the orphans are pit bosses at the go kart. If you don't got a dad, that would be me. <laughs> Uh, but so you you went to the horse race place, and so that's the last time I kind of enjoyed gambling. It's that mm -hmm. old guy, and he's like, you know, and like, yeah, he's, and then yeah, he pretends like he knows all the jockeys, and then he's like, it's fixed. And then, you know, the <laughs> Already field. with the conspiracy <laughs> theories, I feel like conspiracy theories started at the horse races. <laughs> the horse race track. It's all fixed. With old men talking to young impressionable boys who are trying to learn how to gamble. Yeah. So yeah, that's um, 
That's the last time I enjoyed gambling. Uh, horse racing, I never gambled in my life really either. I, I remember when I was young, uh, probably about like the same age, like 16, 17, my one friend's job was filming the horse races. All right. Right? Like he had to go and there was this little tower outside of the track. Yeah, yeah. And he, it was just this wood booth and there was one little like black and white TV in it uh, not because they didn't have color TVs. <laughs> just cause it was like off-track betting. This is a guy yeah. like the, you know that gets people into all these little sh- crappy yeah. diners or crappy holes in the wall next to you know, next to dive bars and gets some betting. Yeah, exactly. Right, because that like what? Because that video goes out yeah, to all these little dive bars around. Closed circuit, like yeah, you know, exactly. Closed circuit through the uh, run through the, the facility. But, I didn't. Yeah. You're right. I didn't realize that. I thought it just played in the stadium for like people inside. But you're, and now that I think about it, I've been at dive bars and they have those like those horse speeds. race videos going from locally. Yeah. So basically, you had this huge camera, and because it was so zoomed in, you barely had to move it. Right? Like, <laughs> right. It was just like slowly move it. It was on this like steadying thing, and then in between races, he just would be in this like tiny little wooden tower that you had to climb a ladder up that was just big enough for this little tv the chair and the camera and he'd watch i think fraser (laughs) in between races he's like best job ever and then it was his birthday this uh one year this i guess it was his birthday every year (laughs) but this year he wanted the job he wanted the night off work and he was asking like his friends for someone to take the shift and we were all like, well, no, we want to like hang out with you on your birthday. And then he had this friend named Crazy Ned. <laughs> They're already the trouble starts. Is this London, Ontario again? This is London, Ontario. Why is there so many people with the Named prefix? Crazy Ned? <laughs> no, just a crazy. Uh, well, I don't know if his name was actually Crazy Ned. <laughs> I don't know if his parents were like right out the gate, like this one's gonna be crazy for sure. <laughs> Let's name him Crazy Ned. Are you sure not just Ned? No, this one's crazy. So Crazy Ned, yeah, Jared's like, I need someone to take my job for the evening. All you got to do is climb into the booth. No one checks on him, right? So he's like, no one's even going to know someone else is doing it. Just when the track, like when the race comes on, a big light goes on. So you get this warning. You're in like a a box when the light goes on. Unless you're like blind, you're not going to miss it. Just turn the thing on and gentle circle, gentle circle. Gentle circle, exactly. So he loads Ned into the booth, shows him how it works. And we go downtown and we're drinking and we're walking down the street having like a fun night and then we run into crazy net <laughs> jared's like what the hell are you doing man why are you why, how are you even here why are you not in the booth and he's like oh man they didn't appreciate my filming <laughs> 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 and he's like, what are you talking about? What, do you mean? <laughs> what the hell did you do? <laughs> and he's like, well, I wanted to capture the soul of the horses. So I zoomed in on their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and so people were like standing <laughs> with their betting tickets. The horses coming down or the race is coming down to the wire and then the camera just zooms in on a horse's eye and the manager rushes out opens the booth and there's just some guy he's never seen before (laughs) probably like eating condiment packets I remember Crazy Ned always used to eat condiment packets (laughs) like that was his like lunch mustard from (laughs) So then uh, he goes to my friend Jared. Like he's like Jared's like, like what did the manager say when he sent you out? And he's like, oh, he told me to leave. He told me to tell you you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Jared's like, fuck. 
<laughs> and after all that, Crazy Ned's like, so when can you pay me for my work tonight? <laughs> crazy Ned. Classic Crazy Ned. Classic Crazy Ned. Can't take a hit. I don't know Didn't who's crazy. The guy who asked a guy named Crazy Ned <laughs> to cover his shit. You gotta stay away with anyone with a nickname in London, Ontario. Yeah, that's the sign of trouble. I always told you about the smoking. That there are two smoking Daves in London, <laughs> Ontario. <laughs> Their name was Smoking Dave. Like everyone smokes. <laughs> but Smoking Dave was a guy who played uh, one of those bar troubadours. Uh, played at some place. You know, I'm not even going to mention the name of bars in London, Ontario, because yeah, it just makes you feel terrible. Yeah. But this guy, Smoking Dave, we loved him because mm. he could play Triumph. And you, yeah, you need take you take requests. Triumph, what's Triumph? It's a band. It's and not the song Rocky runs to, is it? No, 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 no. It's not. It's, it's the not feeling, that not the song. <laughs> I remember, like we we would like always test Smoke and Dave of his rock knowledge, mm. and Smoke and Dave was the rock guitar guy for us. He would okay. play whatever we would ask for. Are you still with the same crew that you were trying to find, like the sailboats? <laughs> and now you're like, we found our rock and troubadour guy. It's ten years later. You guys are still looking. Still. <laughs> Smoking Dave, you're our guy. We tried the go karts, that didn't work. Ponies didn't work. Smoking Dave, you're our last shot. <laughs> Someone, Tell you're me. not even the original Smoking Dave. <laughs> So we we get smoke. So we you know, Smokey Dave. You're right. For this period of our life, is our man. <laughs> yeah. And um, so we're gonna throw a private party. Mm-hmm. And some guys are like, let's go hire Smoking Dave. Mm-hmm. So we we assign that job to him. He goes. He's like, guys, no problem. We got Smoking Dave at our barn party out in Arva. Arva. And so we got the we got we got the barn we got the party we got smoking Dave it's gonna be awesome mm. party starting we do all the logistics buses are about to show up sound check comes and this guy walks in the room and we're like who the hell are you <laughs> you know with a guitar yeah. and he's like smoking Dave <laughs> <What>? <laughs> and then we're like buddy who was assigned to hire smoking Dave. He's like, this isn't the right guy. How could you not? And well, so it turns did, out this guy's name is Smoking Dave as well. But so did the original Smoking Dave try to pawn this Smoking Dave off on you? Or did you like look in the phone book Smoking Dave and call the wrong one? How did the, the Smoking Daves get switched? <laughs> and I think this guy undercut the original Smoking Dave. <laughs> knew that the Smoking Dave brand was the way to go. Yeah. And he just undercut him. <laughs> this guy's out there cutting Smoking Dave's <laughs> charge. <laughs> I'll do it for half a pack. <laughs> so he starts off Smoking cart- Dave wants a carton for a show. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll do it for three Lucy's, baby. <laughs> so I can play like- half the songs he can play. <laughs> Literally, you can only play the first half of the songs. <laughs> That's all you need. You can figure the rest out. You fill the rest in with your head. <laughs> so, we first beat up the guy who was hired to get Smoking Dave and got the wrong Smoking Dave. You beat him up? We didn't beat him up, but we gave him some shit for three hours, and then we were just like, and we went. We, I think we confabbed because it was a yeah. We're the party hosts, mm. and we're like, well, we, just, we gotta go with the Smoking Dave. Yeah, let's, let's just go with it. So then I remember like he did two songs and it was pretty good and then one of the organizers is just back there and he's like how about some triumph yeah and then this guy fucking kicked it out he, <laughs> had- out the, he could do it all great party it went yeah. awesome and from then on we're like okay there's crazy Dave and then there's crazy fucking smoking Dave well see I know you're not a betting man but how much you you want to bet on which one of those guys first died of lung cancer? <laughs> <laughs> crazy, crazy fucking smoking day. Crazy fucking smoking day. Died first. Do you followed, know that? 
followed by Crazy Dave. Oh, also, oh, oh, so they weren't both smoking Dave. There was a cra- <laughs> crazy. Dave. Well, no, we decided to call for for simplicity's sake. Yeah, and so we would never mess up. Yeah, and not get the wrong Crazy Dave. We started right. calling the other one Crazy Fucking Smoking Dave. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because there was a crazy fucking smoking party, and we were like, okay, right. we're satisfied with you, but like. Yeah, you're not, you're not, you're in our hearts, you're still not smoking Dave. So, is this before the time of raves? I feel like there was a time where barn parties became raves. (laughs) It was like this basically in small towns in Canada, it was barn parties, and then there were like raves outside of cities. I wonder what the crossover was. (laughs) Was it just like a sharp, no more barn parties? And because like the rave bar at the time, Mm. um, and I remember going there. Um, no, it was in the city. It was still like this. And the only people who liked that type of music and liked, yeah, techno at the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, there wasn't, I mean, or I was not privy to those parties. But you're right. The the barn kind of, you start off as a bush party. You don't even have yeah. a barn. It's oh, just right. a bunch of kids yeah. going out to the bush somewhere. That's true. And then, then it turns into barn parties when you have some organizational skills and can hire talent that's that's when you meet like an older person who's willing to endorse these children <laughs> <laughs> look kids i got a barn <laughs> get out of the woods <laughs> come into my barn <laughs> bring as much ecstasy as you want <laughs> you've been in the fields long enough don't <laughs> worry the mayor of this town's my <laughs> brother <laughs> no cops are coming <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the evil barn lords. <laughs> yeah, the barn lords. <laughs> the barn drug lords of southwestern Ontario. <sighs> I guarantee that's a thing. Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. The I barn don't. lords. <laughs> the bar- you don't want to mess with the barn lords. Uh, yeah, I, I don't want to mess with the barn lords. There's one great guy. Who, one guy stayed one in touch good with barn him. lord <laughs> there's always one good barn lord there's a lot of like meth in these small towns right like out east probably everywhere i guess like, it's just cheap it's just it's cheap. cheap it's easy to transport <laughs> okay you sold me <laughs> do you want to go into moving meth <laughs> it's so sad there's a lot of meth well it's easy to transport <laughs> Looking on the bright side. <laughs> I mean, I've been in so many places with like greater poverty or greater wealth, and I've just been in the sketchiest situations in London, Ontario. I mean, just with people who are just like, did you say that to me? And then you're like, I can't. Uh, now I'm in trouble. And yeah, there's all these moments where you realize that. I'm surrounded by zombies and I'm yeah, weird, weird parties. Now. And I think it's also that weird, like it's that Midwest where everything's a semi-detached house. What, what um, is a semi-detached? Or not even like a, well, not it's semi-detached. Well, semi-detached. A, a semi-detached is when you have yeah, when you have two homes sharing one center wall. Oh yeah, yeah. as opposed to a fully detached house, which will have oh. air on the whole side of one unit. But yeah, I think it is a certain... It's like two houses holding hands. It was what someone said the other day. Yeah, it's a semi-detached. Um, but even about like uh, the like the Detroit area, but a lot of those places in the Midwest, when that suburban, small detached homes, once those get like a little long in the tooth and old and decaying, and then these neighborhoods get incredibly sketchy. It's almost as if you had like this attached row house that there's almost some sort of social cohesion and responsibility because you can hear if someone's being murdered or someone's beating their wife on the other side of the wall. But the moment you get that fully detached space, yeah, then yeah, that's where like you, they would say like yeah, in Detroit, like every house at the end of the block was like a shooting gallery where you could do heroin and it just kind of gets a little bit even sketchier. I was, and that's why I always feel like compared to Montreal and where we're living here, mm. where again it's a lot of you know row houses and people on top of each other that there is some type of mutual responsibility and mutual just yeah. kind of watching each other that kind of makes things get a little less crazy. Like things can be less hidden. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, 
Yeah, I guess that's true. Like, everything you do in an apartment here in Montreal, you can hear. Yeah. Right now, if we only have one listener to this podcast, it's my neighbors <laughs> <laughs> listening to us right now. You know what's actually interesting? Me and Amelie were looking at... Um, she was looking up uh, houses in Detroit, and it's crazy. There's just abandoned house, abandoned blocks, and they're selling for like $1,000. Like, totally gutted inside. Uh, it's it's almost, like, amazing. Like, you could just buy... Well, the house that was, like, 1000 literally... It looked like a house from outside, but inside, yeah, the amount of work it would take. I mean, the houses yeah, that were like fine were more. But I mean, after a while, a just having months. a frame of a bunch of rotting shit is not much of a investment at all. Well, so, it would be a good place to start a cult. Uh, it, pretty much, it's your cheapest cult startup city. Yeah, it, it ranks high mm. on. Uh, on places to go right now. If, uh, and I mean, a lot of people starting up a lot of different stuff. But uh, yeah, cults. It's probably, probably the next great cult coming out of Detroit. I mean, after some other. Even though I think the greatest cult that came out of Detroit is it's still. And that's going to be hard to top the insane clown posse. Like I really just put <laughs> yeah. in the level of, as a cult and a very very successful cult. What constitutes a cult? Like, what? if you have a, like, is every band a cult because they have a following? Or is it when the face paint comes out? Or are, there, are they the only bit cult with face paint? <laughs> There's a lot of other cults with face paint. It seems like there should be more. It's I guess a, the circus was the OG. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's, a most, it's the most cultish of bands. Yeah. I mean. Like the fervent, is it fervent? Fervor? Fervor, the, the fervor. The fervor of the followers. Of the followers. Yeah. Um, I don't know much about it, uh, and I don't want to get into it. It's, it's, but yeah, it's the, the, the part of Michigan that's really scary. Like, well, because you lived in Detroit, right? And it's all, uh, I mean, it's. And the last time I went there, it's funny. I went to the like the Down River area, which is which what. Is, I- I mean, down river. It's like it's not up river. It's and it's really down river is everything kind of after the Rouge River, which is like mm-hmm. one of the most polluted um, waterways in North America because the Rouge River goes by the old Henry Ford, like these old casting plants and giant industrial facilities, and this this water in the Rouge, Rouge the Rouge yeah. River um, was so polluted that it, several times in the seventies the the river was on fire. Like there's so much crap in the water that if you threw a match in it would light on fire same thing happens to me when i light a candle in my bath <laughs> i'm just kidding but, uh, duh. so that's where uh but then that area around there and i've been told or i think i read once that like one of the guys from the insane clown posse is from this that part oh. of actual detroit mm. and um it's hard to describe like i remember i i <laughs> And I'm, you know, you could, shouldn't be laughing, but it's so. What do they call that neighborhood? And it's right next to a um, an oil refinery, like literally, and it's 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 giant oil refinery. Everything down there has like ash on it. On the other side of the oil refinery, it's called Delray. 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 Like it's Del this neighborhood Beach. called Delray. Oh yeah. That has this small and you know. Workers who used to row houses again that used to probably work in all those plants around there. Mm. But it's just one of the most poverty stricken places in North I mean, urban poverty that you've never seen. Because of these like factories closing? Yeah, because of the factories that have closed around there, whoever's what's left, mm. the people who are left in that neighborhood just have had zero opportunities. And. Yeah. There's a story about this just woman, and it's like right. In, it's not far from it's in the water by the water yeah. in Detroit. Um, and I was just reading this article. And this woman was like outside with like this broken down car, and she was feeding her possum. And you're like, come on, this is almost like stereotypical. But then there, she was interviewing, you know, it's just Detroit News or Detroit Free Press, and they're interviewing this woman, and she's like. They keep leaving dead bodies down at the cul-de-sac at the end of my street. What? 
They found another girl there yesterday. Jesus. They keep finding bodies. And it was like, <laughs> even just a sentence, the fact that it was like a regular occurrence. This is where people go and dump like how bodies. People like, complain, like, the squirrels are eating my plants on my patio here. <laughs> You know, you think if one or two bodies are dumped at the end of your street, like, yeah. you know, what's going on? Mm. This seemed like this was like, a, this happened every fortnight. Wow. And she was like, you know, hey, Thursdays. So all this is the lead to say that you like, you felt less safe in London, Ontario <laughs> than in Detroit. It's true. Yeah. I can, and then maybe there's a familiarity and how to talk to people down there. Mm. Which all it comes down to is is like yeah, you're fine in Detroit as long as you don't put on any airs. Mm-hmm. The moment you put on any type of front, yeah, people call you out and then they'll call you down. And then, but but in London, like, Ontario, I mean, no, there's some just random. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I never felt comfortable there. There's always people mm-hmm. I I could I thought they were about to snap at any moment. Yeah, and don't feel that way in the D. There's definitely, like, I always feel in Montreal, there's just, like, that layer of fear that's not as, like, constant, that, like, something's going to happen or go down or the wrong person's going to, like, snap. and Bar fights. Yeah. yeah. It's like, and I've Here, never seen a city with so many bar fights. Yeah. Where it was almost a regular occurrence in London, Ontario. And then, like, I think, you know, bar fights, yeah, they happened in Windsor, Ontario, you know, yeah, pretty, and, you know, well, we had bar fights. Calgary's pretty crazy for it, too. The thing is, like, there's, there's, no, there's no bar fights in Detroit. Like, oh, there, no. and there is, but, like, I mean, people pull out their guns. Like, the moment they get pissed, you you die. So it's because everyone's packing heat, you kind of So there's don't. less violence in Detroit, but more deaths, maybe? That's it. Like, what I find is, like, if someone steps on your What's sneakers that? in Detroit... On your, your brand new white sneakers, you're like, "Hey man, it's all good." Mm. Oh, you let. Whereas that here in Montreal, someone will be like, and I found it crazy. People will be like, "What the fuck?" Screaming, <laughs> <you>. <laughs> and I'm like, it's all yelling. And it's all yelling and posturing, but it's yeah. like you can't you can't even posture with that. And you look over a guy, and you're like, "That guy might be packing." You know what? Not worth my life. When I first <laughs> talking moved about here, my sneakers, I'd see people yelling outside of bars, and I'd always think a fight was about to happen. And then you get like that tension in you, like oh shit, like I don't want a bottle to come flying across at my face. And then nothing would ever, it would never go past the yelling. And then slowly I realized that's like it for the most part. <laughs> and that's it. People don't, which is fight way here. nicer. They mu- I, they mouth off here. Yeah, and that's the other thing. It makes people mouthier. Uh, so wait, are you and that's for a, the box? I'm a complicated man, Hart. <laughs> I don't know what one is better, and, and, and I, on one level, all of them could. All of them seem to be forms of masculine aggression that are totally unneeded. <laughs> totally unneeded, but I, I did like the politeness <laughs> again in, in the, of the guns of the, the gun truck. culture. Right. I, I thought like people didn't people let petty things go. Mm. A lot more. Were people here? I assume there was probably some extreme incidents over petty things, too. Extreme Right? Like, there's got to be times over someone just stepping on someone's sneaker that someone does get shot when a gun is a possibility, right? Yes. But there's also just this kind of... I think sneakers are the problem. (laughs) But there's also that whole thing at that point where it's like, is it worth the heat? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and then, so this is like the middle of the road Toronto, middle of the road mouthy and fighty. Because, yeah. <laughs> like, they, they all came from small towns in Ontario and, yeah. and went to Toronto. So they still got the small town mouth. Yeah. But with the, yeah. And, and small town aggression. Small town aggression uh, with that the, city mouth. The city mouth. <laughs> Montreal is just all city mouth. Very yeah. little aggression. Mm. And yeah, Detroit's all aggression. Well, maybe I like it little more mouth. here because uh, when people are yelling, I just don't understand what they're saying. <laughs> so I, it doesn't offend me. Like being yelled at in a language you don't know, I'd prefer <laughs> than getting punched in a language I don't know <laughs> any day of the week. Oh, Hart and George, 
And this is Dream Dream Window. Window. Follow us. Like us. Comment. Love us. And where can they find us, Hart? Find us on Apple Podcasts. YouTube. Spotify. And all the other major platforms. This is Dream Window. This is Hart. I'm George. Good night. Yeah.